Hello everyone, hope this video will find you all in a good health. Myself, Dr. Parth and let's uh, discuss about the tuber suppressor gene in our today's lecture. So we will mainly focus on the RB gene and the P53 gene which is known by the name governor of genome and the guardian of genome respectively. I will teach all this tumor suppressor gene but we will focus in detail about the RB gene and P53 gene. So first of all, in our previous lecture of Neoplasia, we have seen that there are basically eight fundamental changes that occur in the cell physiology in case of an cancer, which is known by the name hallmark of cancer or the molecular basis of cancer formation. It comes under the competency number PS7.2. These eight are the hallmark of cancer or the molecular basis of cancer formation. Today we are going to discuss about the resistance to the tumor suppressor gene, which can lead to cancer development. That is one of the molecular basis of cancer. All right. So, in our first lecture of molecular basis, we have seen that oncogene mainly drives the cell proliferation, right? It will lead to cell proliferation and so cancer formation. While exactly opposite, you know, the tumor suppressor gene will apply a break to the cell proliferation. It will prevent the cell proliferation and so they can prevent the cancer formation, right? So, oncogene will lead to cancer formation directly while the tumor suppressor gene will inhibit the cancer formation, right? So, if there is a mutation in the tumor suppressor gene or if one of the tumor suppressor gene is not working, then cancer can develop. All right. And now, before we understand the tumor suppressor gene in the detail, you need to know about the cell cycle, right? So, every cell, you know, will get proliferate and they will do the sequential cell cycle movement that is in the form of G0. From G0, they, were, they will enter into G1. Then they will enter into the synthetic phase, then finally G2 and finally mitosis M phase, right? So the sequence of cell cycle movement is G1, S, G2 and the M. Now, you know, when the cell is doing this cell cycle movement, there are two particular checkpoints in this particular cell cycle. One checkpoint is at the G1 S transition and the second one is at G2 M transition. Right? So, they will check for the DNA mutation. If the mutated DNA is present in the cell, then that particular cell cycle movement is prevented by the RB gene or P53 gene or by the another tumor suppressor gene. Right? And you know, at the G1S checkpoint, mainly the body will do the DNA damage. There will be checking for the DNA damage. That is before replication. Right? And this particular check is by the RB gene. Right? All right. And Second checkpoint is at the G2M state. This is the G2M transition, right? And here, this, here you know, there will be checking for the safe completion of the DNA replication. But, you know, uh, the cell will check whether, you know, safe cell cycle completion can occur or not. Means, I mean, uh, the mutated cell should not be allowed to get mitosis and divide into uh, 2 to 4, right? They doesn't allow the mutated cell to divide. So, that is the second checkpoint at the G2M. And, you know, uh, these two movement G1S and the G2M movement will occur due to one protein. The name is cyclin, right? G1S movement is done by cyclin D movement, cyclin D and E. While the G2M cell cycle movement will be occur by cyclin A and B, right? So, you know, cyclin will allow the cell cycle movement, right? So, G1S checkpoint is DNA repair checkpoint before replication, while the G2M checkpoint is after replication, right? RB gene mainly act as a G1S checkpoint, while the P53 gene can act as a G1 as well as G2M checkpoint. They will act at both the checkpoint, right? All right. So, what is cycling? This is very important. You need to understand the cycling in the detail then and then you can easily understand the RB gene, right? So, you know, cyclines are simply a protein. Which, which will cyclically produce and degrade during the cell cycle movement. And the cyclin will facilitate the cell cycle movement, right? They are the proteins. They will facilitate the cell cycle movement. And, you know, cyclin cannot work alone. They need a help of enzymes. That is known by the name cyclin-dependent kinase. They are cyclin-associated enzymes, right? So, cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinase will combine together. They will form a complex and they will allow the cell cycle movement. So, there are basically four cyclin, cyclin D, E, A and B. Cyclin D will work along with cyclin dependent kinase number 4 and 6. Cyclin E will act along with cyclin dependent kinase number 2. Cyclin A will act along with CDK2 and 1. While the cyclin B will act along with cyclin dependent kinase number 1. 
So the sequence is cyclin D E A B and corresponding cyclin dependent kinase are 4, 2, 2, 1. You can remember in that sequence, right? So clearly understand that cyclin and the cyclin dependent kinase will allow the cell cycle movement, particularly cyclin D and E will do the G1S cell cycle movement while cyclin A and B will allow the G2M cell cycle movement, right? All right. Okay. Now, now you know, let's see some of the cell cycle inhibitors. So, basically as we have seen, cyclin and the CDK will do the cell cycle movement, right? Particularly cyclin D and the cyclin dependent kinase number 4 will phosphorylate the RB gene and so the cell cycle movement from G1 to S phase can occur. How? That we will see later on in the slide, right? So, you know, these cyclins need to be inhibited whenever there is a mutation in the DNA. Whenever there is an abnormal cell, they need to be inhibited. So, that inhibition, non-specific inhibition will occur by cell cycle inhibitor, particularly by CIP, KIP family. Uh, this particular family, CIP, KIP, include P21 and P27 protein. They will do the non-specific cyclin inhibition. Because of inhibition of cy cyclin, they don't allow the abnormal cell to enter into the cell cycle and so they will prevent the cancer, right? And particularly this P21 protein is induced by tumor suppressor gene P53, right? That, uh, you know, P53 is a guardian of genome. It will lead to production of P21 and which will inhibit the cycling. So, abnormal cell cannot enter into cell cycle. And P27 protein induced by transforming growth factor beta. Understand? So, P21, P27 are the family of CIP, KIP family and they will inhibit the cycling. And so, they will inhibit the cell cycle movement. So, abnormal cell cannot undergo cell cycle and the, mute and the cancer is prevented. Second cell cycle inhibitor is INK4 ARF family. Particularly, you know, P16 INK4. There are two groups, P16 INK and P14 ARF protein, right? Among that, P16 INK4 will bind to the cyclin D, cyclin dependent kinase 4, and they will particularly inhibit this particular complex. And wherever this complex is inhibited, you know, RB gene cannot work. RB gene cannot be phosphorylated, right? We have seen that cyclin D and CDK4 will phosphorylate the RB gene and so cell cycle movement occur. So this particular P16 INK4 will inhibit the cyclin D CDK4 and so the cell cycle movement is prevented by inhibitory effect on RB gene. While the P14 ARF protein will increase the P53 level and P53 will inhibit, you know, uh, so when the P53 is increased, you know, uh, they can lead to cell cycle you know, they can inhibit the cell cycle whenever needed by inducing P21 protein. And, you know, P53 level here increased by inhibitory effect on MDM2 that we will see later on in the slide. So, cell cycle inhibitors are two, two groups, CIP, KIP family and INK4 ARF family, which include P21, P27 protein and the P16, P14 protein respectively. There are basically two checkpoints in the cell cycle for the cancer prevention. One is mediated by RB gene at the G1S checkpoint and second one is P53, which work at a G1S as well as G2M checkpoint, right? So there are basically two checkpoint, RB gene and P53. Okay, now first of all, let me teach you about uh, RB gene, right? We will begin with RB gene tumor suppressor gene. There are lots of tumor suppressor gene in our body, among which the most important one is RB gene and the P53 gene. So first of all, let's talk about the RB gene. It is known by the name governor of genome, right? Why? So, let's understand in a, it in a detail. So, first of all, as we know, you know, growth inhibitors, particularly by P53 and transforming growth factor beta, will stimulate a production of cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor, particularly of P16 INK4 family. So, whenever P16 INK is increased, right, we have seen that the P16 INK4 will inhibit a cyclin D and CDK4. So, so, they will inhibit cyclin D and cyclin E, which require for the cell cycle movement. So, if they are inhibited, the RB gene are, RB gene are hypophosphorylated, right? Hypophosphorylated means they have only two phosphorus group over the outer surface. So, they will form a suppressive pocket that will, that will you know, uh, bring the E2F together. They don't allow the E2F to do the transcription, right? Whenever this suppressive pocket is formed, the E2F is not free. E2F is one of the transcription factors. So, if it is not free, they cannot do the transcription, right? Whenever the RB gene is hypophosphorylated. But if there is an increase of growth factor, particularly epidermal growth factor, platelet-derived growth factor, right? Whenever there is a stimulation, 
uh, you know the cyclin D and E will increase. They will not inhibit it. They will increase and they will hyperphosphorylate the RB gene. See, there are lots of phosphorus group over the RB gene. And whenever the RB gene is hyperphosphorylated, you know the suppressive pocket is released and this E2F can lead to transcription, right? So, RB gene hyperphosphorylation is induced by cyclin D and E and that's why, you know, E2F is released and so E2F can do the transcription and so the cell cycle movement G1 to S phase can occur. Understand? So, if, you know, a cyclin D and E are inhibited by cell cycle inhibitor, then the cell cycle movement can't occur because the RB gene is in hypophosphorylated state. And in the hypophosphorylated state, they will form the pocket and they don't allow the E2F to do the transcription. Understand? So, I want to say that the key of cell cycle movement is in the hand of RB gene, right? If uh, RB gene wants, then only cell cycle movement can occur. That's why, you know, RB gene is one of the, is known by the name governor of genome and it is one of the tumor suppressor gene. If it is inhibited, then cancer can develop, right? Because the control over the cell cycle will be lost. Right? How? So, if the RB gene is mutated, then you know E2F will not will not combine with it. The tumor suppressive pocket will not form, and so the E2F can constantly do the transcription, and so the it it can be possible that mutated cell can enter into cell cycle and can lead to cancer. Right? See, this is the Nutson's two hit hypothesis, right? Which uh, which demonstrate how retinoblastoma developed by RB gene mutation. The most common cancer associated with RB gene mutation is retinoblastoma. So, it could be of two form. You know, uh, this is applicable to all the tumor suppressor gene. See, in the heterozygous state, you know, the cancer can develop, can't develop. Heterozygous means, see, uh, this is the heterozygous state. See, uh, this yellow color is a normal gene, right? Uh, that normal alleles. So, when the normal alleles is present over the uh, gene, uh, you know, one is mutated, this red color is mutated. So, when the one alley is normal and another one is mutated, so that is the heterozygous state, right? Both is not abnormal. So, whenever the heterozygous state is present, cancer can't develop. Cancer can develop only when both the alleles of the gene is mutated. See, uh, this is the pure mutation. That is known by the name homozygous state. Whenever the both alleles are mutated, it's a homozygous state and then only cancer can occur. Because if, uh, if the condition is heterozygous, then RB gene can work, you know, they can work properly. So, cancer can develop only if both the alleles of the gene is mutated. And, you know, in the sporadic form, uh, usually both the gene, both the alleles are mutated from the, can be mutated spontaneously and so cancer can develop. But in the familial form, you know, usually one gene is normal and another one is mutated. But, you know, because of some of the factors, some of the abnormal factors, environmental factors, you know, this, uh, this uh, normal gene also can be mutated, you know, additional hit can lead to mutation of normal gene as well and so cancer can develop whenever both the alleles of the gene is mutated. This is the homozygous state and it can lead to cancer formation, right? So, you know, if RB gene is not working properly, then cancer can develop. So, when they are not working properly, they can't work properly if, if it is mutated, right? You know, they can't work properly if there is amplification of cyclin D and CDK4. You know, cyclin D and CDK4 will lead to cell cycle movement and will, uh, will you know, hyperphosphorylate the RB gene. We have seen that, you know, uh, sorry, we have seen that cyclin D and CDK4 will have phosphorylate the RB gene. And once the RB gene is phosphorylated, E2F can lead to transcription. So, understand, uh, if amplification of cyclin D and CDK4, then RB gene can't work. Uh, you know, if cell cycle inhibitors are mutated, particularly P16, INK4, if they are inhibited, obviously, you know, the cell cycle inhibitors will not work, then cyclin will constantly do the cell cycle movement by hyperphosphorylating RB gene, right? Okay, so, you know, uh, if, uh, so, if cyclin D and cyclin dependent kinase 4 are amplified, then they will phosphorylate the RB gene, and so cell cycle movement will occur, and mutated cell can enter into cell cycle and can lead to cancer formation. If cell cycle inhibitors are mutated, particularly if P16 INK4 is not working properly, then cyclin D and cyclin dependent kinase 4 are not inhibited. And if they are not inhibited, then there is a chance that mutated cell can enter into cell cycle because of because the effect of cyclin D is lost if P16 INK4 is mutated, right? And you know, viral oncoprotein, particularly by human papilloma virus, E7 protein, can directly inhibit uh, RB gene. That's very interesting, you know, and that's why they can lead to cancer formation.
All right. So now let's talk about the tumors that is associated with the RB gene mutation. If RB gene not working properly, then which cancer can be developed? Most important MCQ. So the common cancer that can be developed is retinoblastoma. Second one is osteosarcoma, then glioblastoma, small cell lung carcinoma, breast cancer, and the bladder cancer. These particular tumors are associated with the RB gene mutation. All right. So that was all about the RB gene, which is known by the name guardian of genome. Now let's see one of the most important tumor suppressor gene after RB gene, that is the P53, which is known by the name guardian of genome. So let's understand. Uh, why the name guardian of genome is given you know this particular sentence is written in the robin's book right so we need to understand why it is guardian of genome so it's a most important tumor suppressor gene right and in most of the cancer it is mutated if p53 is not working properly then there is a chance that you can develop multiple cancers right here the p stands for protein and the 53 stands for the weight of protein that is 53 kilo delton that's why the name p53 is given P53 gene by the transcription and translation will lead to production of P53 protein which will be act as a tumor suppressor gene and which will prevent the cancer formation. All right. Location is on the chromosome number 17 sodam right and you know P53 is normally present in all the normal tissue they are present in all the normal tissue right. So what is the function of P53 you know it is one of the most important cell cycle regulator it will act as a at a both G1S and the G2M checkpoint right at the both the level of cell cycle checkpoint they will work and they will lead to repair of the mutated cell if it is present right they will do the DNA repair if the DNA repair is not possible then they will remove that cell from our body by apoptosis right it is most important cell cycle regulator it will lead to dna repair and it will lead to apoptosis of the cell which cannot be repaired right that's why it is guardian of genome right so you know p53 can lead to cell cycle arrest uh, if the cell cycle arrest is temporary then it is known by the name quiescence and if it will permanently inhibit the cell cycle then it is known by the name senescence right and senescence will occur through microRNA and the link RNA in which the cell cycle movement is temporary arrest and this particularly will occur if the cell is mutated right if it is abnormal cell if the DNA is mutated in a particular cell right then p53 will work and they, they will not allow the cell to enter into cell cycle right they will not able to proliferate because of the presence of p53 right so see this is the image from the robin's book where you will demonstrate the activity of p53 see this is the normal cell in which p53 is present so whenever our cell is exposed to any radiation carcinogen mutations right so whenever such exposure is occurred dna is damaged right and when the dna is damaged you know p53 will accumulate it will bind to the dna and you know it will specifically will lead to repair of that mutated cell by inducing GAD D45. GAD D45 will be induced, it will lead to DNA repair. And you know, for the repair cell need a time. So the cell cycle movement is also prevented. You know, uh, G1 arrest will also occur by the induction of P21 protein. And we know very well that P21 protein, our previous, uh, we have seen that P21 protein is a cell cycle inhibitor. It will inhibit the cyclin D and cyclin dependent kinase 4, right? So P21 will lead to G1S arrest. So abnormal cell will not enter into cell cycle, will not proliferate and it will repair by GAD D45. So there will be successful repair. But anyhow, somehow if repair is not possible, you know, then there will be either senescence, which is a permanent cell cycle arrest or the P53 will do, will induce a BAX and the Puma protein, right? And this particular two protein will induce an intrinsic pathway of apoptosis. And so by the apoptosis, the abnormal cell will be removed, right? So P53 either repair the damaged cell, you know, if there is a DNA mutation, then either they will be repaired or they will be removed by apoptosis or there will be senescence by P53, right? Either they will repair or they will remove, understand? but they don't allow the DNA damaged cell, mutated cell to enter into the cell cycle and so the cancer is prevented. But if in our body P53 is not working properly on the right side, right? If we don't have the P53 or if P53 is mutated, then you know, 
there will be no DNA repair, there will be no apoptosis, there will be no senescence, there will be no cell cycle arrest. So, you know, mutant cell, DNA damage cell can proliferate, can expand and can lead to development of cancer formation, right? And that's why I want to say that, you know, P53 plays a central role in maintaining the integrity of our genome, right? Our genome integrity is maintained by P53. And that's why, you know, it is known by the name guardian of genome. It will prevent the cancer formation. It guard our genome, right? So if they are mutated, then cancer can develop multiple cancers. And one interesting fact about P53 is that, you know, you might have question that, sir, if P53 inhibiting the cell cycle, then, you know, uh, the normal cell proliferation will also be inhibited by the P53. But it is not true. Why? Because, you know, P53 is having only short half-life of 20 minutes. It will very unstable and very rapidly degrade. Why? Because, you know, MDM2 protein will inhibit the P53, right? MDM2 specifically target P53 and it will rapidly degrade the P53 once its function is over. Understand? So, because of MDM2, P53 having half-life of only 20 minutes, right? But suppose if MDM2, uh, you know, overexpress right if mdm2 is overexpress then it can uh, prevent the p53 action normally and so cancer can develop right p53 function will be inhibited by overexpression of mdm2 right all right and you know in the most of the 70 percent human cancer there is a mutation of p53 right and if p53 is mutated if there is a mutation in the p53 tumor suppressor gene then the resulting disorder is known by the name life from any syndrome in which multi patient can have a more chance for development of many cancers particularly these tumors are associated with p53 mutations right with the life from any syndrome as well life from any syndrome means mutated p53 so if p53 is not working then sarcoma breast cancer leukemia brain tumor adrenal carcinoma can develop right all right. So if P53 is mutated or inactivated, there will be no cell cycle arrays, there will be no DNA repair, there will be no apoptosis, and the and the cell progress with damaged DNA can occur. And such mutated cell, when proliferate, it can lead to cancer formation. Right? Okay. Two another protein is also associated with the P53. That is a P63 and P73, which is a member of P53 family. This P63 is essential for the differentiation of stratified squamous epithelium. While the P73 is a strong pro-apoptotic effect after DNA damage by chemotherapeutic drug, right? P53 will lead to apoptosis of the damaged cell, particularly if it occurs by chemotherapeutic drug, right? And P63 is essential for the differentiation of stratified squamous epithelium. All right. So, see friends, uh, these are the different, uh, you know, uh, tumor suppressor gene. We have talked about the RB gene and the P53 member, right? P53 gene. RB gene was governor of genome while the P53 was, uh, uh, you know, guardian of genome. They are the cell cycle checkpoint, uh, checkpoint checker, right? They can inhibit the cell cycle whenever needed. But, you know, there are lots of other tumor suppressor gene also available. Just uh, see the outline of that tumor suppressor genes, right? So, uh, you have to remember these particular tables, right? It is given in the Robbins book. See, uh, first we will talk about the tumor suppressor gene which act as a mitogenic signal, right? Uh, inhibitors of mitogenic signaling pathway. Uh, these include APC, NF12, PTCH, P10, and the SMAD D2 and D4. Uh, you know, this APC gene product, uh, you know, uh, mutation of APC is associated with particularly carcinoma of the stomach, colon, pancreas, and the melanoma. You know, particularly it is associated with the GI malignancy. Uh, NF1 and 2 mutation is so NF1 mutation is associated with uh, neuroblastoma, juvenile myeloid leukemia. NF2 is associated with the swanoma and the menin tumor, right? Uh, you know, PTCH is associated with the basal cell carcinoma and the medulloblastoma. Uh, P10 is associated with a variety of cancers, particularly of uh, lymphoid tumor and many carcinomas, right? Uh, you know, you have to remember this. Uh, all the cancers associated with the tumor suppressor gene, right? These are the names of inhibitors of the mitogenic signaling pathway, right? Uh, SMAD D2 and D4 are associated with, uh, you know, colonic carcinoma and the pancreatic carcinoma, right? Uh, juvenile polyposis is also associated, right? And, you know, this uh, P10 mutation is associated with Cowden syndrome that can be asked in a MCQ as well. 
you know uh, it can be asked in mcq cardiac syndrome is associated associated with pd and gene mutation right all right second group is inhibitor of cell cycle progression right which will uh, cell cycle progression is inhibited whenever the cell is mutated right so that is obviously rb gene rb gene prevent the g1s cell cycle movement they don't allow the cell cycle progression right so if rb gene is mutated rb gene then retinoblastoma osteosarcoma breast colon lung carcinoma can develop we have seen in our previous slide right rb gene mutation associated with these cancers you know cd can uh, 2a also associated with a variety of tumors like that of pancreatic breast esophageal melanoma and the leukemias right uh, third group is inhibitors of the pro growth program of the metabolism and angiogenesis and the name is vhl syndrome which is commonly associated with renal cell carcinoma we will discuss it in a detail in our rcc lecture right stk11 we will discuss it in systemic pathology you know stk11 is associated with a variety of cancers uh, you know sdhb and sdhd is associated with paraganglioma uh, then inhibitors of invasion and metastasis particularly cdh1 right uh, you know uh, cdh1 gene will lead to production of e cadherin protein which uh, do the cell adhesion so if it is mutated you know uh, there could be development of invasive cancer particularly lobular breast carcinoma and the gastric carcinoma in which the e cadherin that is the cdh1 is mutated all right genomic stability is provided by p53 it is a guardian of genome so if it is mutated there could be development of life remini life remini syndrome and many cancers can develop right uh, you know certain genes will lead to the dna repair like that of broca 1 2 you know brca 1 2 mlh1 msh2 and msh6 don't forget it these five genes are associated with the dna repair if they are mutated you know if brca and c2 is mutated then breast cancer ovarian cancer cll can develop if this mlh1 msh2 msh6 is mutated then hereditary non polyposis colon carcinoma can develop hnpcc right it is associated with colon carcinoma and uh, wt1 wilms tumor protein is associated with development of wilms tumor in a children which is a congenital renal tumor right uh, in the children it is most common cause of renal tumor the man1 protein product manin is associated with pituitary parathyroid pancreatic endocrine tumors right so this was all about the various tumor suppressor gene um, among which we have discussed rb gene and p53 gene in the detail now let's see some of the mcqs which gene is mutated in life from any syndrome so obviously the answer is p53 p53 mutation is known by the name life from any syndrome and so there could be development of variety of cancers which gene is responsible for the instability and reduced lifespan of the p53 in a normal cell so that's because of mdm2 right mdm2 having inhibitory effect on p53 and that's why the p53 is ha having half-life only 20 minute normally in our body right in the uh, you know within one hour it is degraded all right p53 upregulate which gene that causes the cell cycle arrest when the dna damage happen so whenever there is a dna damage p53 induces which protein so obviously the answer is p21 and when once the p21 is induced it is a cip kip family which will inhibit the cell cycle movement right so the answer is p21 p53 induced p21 production and p21 is cip kip family so that was all about the tumor suppressor gene hope you have enjoyed this particularly important video i will be right back with a new video till then take care and bye bye Hope you have enjoyed. Thank you very much. Thank you.